Well, today I just want to show you a few different ways you can process campfire wood. Check it out. So it might seem as simple as just going out and collecting wood and building a fire. And um, In some places, that could be okay. Uh, but there's a few things that you should do to look into uh, before you head out to uh, camp somewhere, to backpack. If you're going to be building a fire, some things to consider. You should check out the local fire or campfire regulations. Don't assume it's a free-for-all because in some places uh, it's not. Anywhere you go camping or backpacking is typically governed by some sort of agency. So it could be the National Park Service, it could be the Bureau of Land Management, it could be the U.S. Forest Service, it could be some sort of state park that you're in. There's always some rules and regulations out there that you should look into before you go just chopping down trees and... And maybe some other stuff? And there's some places that don't even allow you to bring in your own wood because uh, they want you to get wood from local places. So why is that? Wood can carry disease with it. It can carry insects with it. Insects and disease that might not be natural to the place that you're going to. And it could literally destroy an entire forest. So there's a reason for those regulations. Um, you want to be careful about that. So if you're going to a place where you're restricted from uh, getting firewood or bringing in firewood, you want to check out the local places. There might be um, uh, firewood that you can get right at the campsite. There might be some local areas near the campsite that, uh, that offer wood for sale. So that's a good place to get it. But if you don't have any restrictions and you're out there, you can go get wood from wherever you're at. There's a few things you can do to test whether it's actually good firewood to use. Uh, first of all, look at it. It doesn't look aged. Are the, are the ends of the wood you know, cracked? That'll tell you that it's been dried long enough because if it's fresh cut wood, it's not gonna burn very well because it's just gonna be wet. So you can smell it. If it's a really strong smell, it's probably too fresh of, of a wood. It's gonna be a lot stronger if it's fresh cut. If it's been out there for a long time, smell it, it smells kind of like nothing or just a little bit like pine, then it's probably okay. Listen to it. <laughs> okay. So if you crack two pieces of wood together and, and it's like a thud, it's probably wet or it's probably uh, not dried enough yet. If you smack it together and it sounds like a baseball bat hitting a ball, then it's probably aged pretty well and it's good to use. And lastly, you can feel it. If it's heavier than it should be for the size that it is, then it's probably wet. Ew. It's probably not good to use. And then one more consideration before I get to showing you my saws and stuff. So if it's laying on the ground, it might be kind of wet. Uh, but if it's standing up, if it's, if, if it's a dead tree standing, that's probably the best kind of tree to get. Or if it's branches off of a tree that are dead, that's really good firewood. If it's laying on the ground in a big pile of wood, it might be an animal home for critters or for insects or for things that are important to the environment. So I would suggest, you know, if you can, avoid that, go to plan B. Find a dead tree that's leaning up against something else that's not on the ground, it's probably not gonna be wet. Or if it's standing or if it's, you know, branches, that's the best kind of wood to get. All right, enough of that. Let's get on with the rest of this. I carry an extra blade in here. There's two blades. One is for dry wood, and the other is for wet wood. This one's for wet wood. It's a little bit different pattern on here to uh, extract all the wet wood as you're sawing through. So put that aside. This is a 21 inch. You can get them in 24 inch as well. But this is big enough for me. Weighs about a pound. Stretches across the top like this. 
and then you just tension it up. What that does This locks in right here, like this. It's just, it tightens up the blade here. Yeah, show you how it works. Let me show you how you take this thing down. Little tensioner up here. Just let her unwind it. Take off this end. It's loose enough. This thing just comes off. This put a couple little dowels in the end is all I have. A couple little holes here. And it folds in. Sometimes these sometimes these teeth get a little caught in here, so just be careful. On this side, so here like this, then just wrap it around. Now I bought this canvas bag from Cap Craft Outdoors. They make some really good stuff like this. Uh, they're waxed, so it's waterproof. Once in a while, you have to re-wax it, but um, not very often. Like once a season, maybe. Put that down in there. And there you go. Now if you had a smaller saw like this, it's only, it's only five inches long. It's a lot more work to get through a piece of wood with a little blade. Five inch blade, 21 inch blade. Now these wire saws, they're, they're barbed. And they slice through wood pretty good, but not necessarily like uh, the log cutting that I was doing with my saw. They're a little bit more difficult on objects that are, you know, easily movable. So if you have a, a branch like this, a dead branch like this on a tree that you want to take down, or if you want to take down a tree, I think these will work pretty well. Let's check it out.
So what do I prefer? Well, it depends, right? Everything always depends. <laughs> if I have a lot of processing to do, if I'm gonna be staying out for a couple days or if it's really cold, I need a lot of wood, I'm gonna bring a bigger saw, um, you know, with a, with a longer blade to make the chore a little bit easier and a little bit faster. If I'm just going out on an overnighter, it's not that cold, I just need a little bit of firewood. Uh, the axe is fine. This little handsaw is fine. Uh, my knife sometimes is sometimes all I need. Uh, this little wire saw, I, I'm not a big fan of this thing. Um, not for the kind of camping that I do. Uh, because this is better for like standing trees um, or logs that are you know pretty secure that I can hack through. Uh, this is very lightweight, obviously. It's just a little wire. So if weight is your biggest factor that you want to use uh, for carrying something like this, this uh, is super duper light. I'm not sure how heavy it is, but it's it's dinky. The next latest thing would be this. I think it's like six ounces or something like that. So it's less than a half pound. Uh, my hatchet's about a pound. My my hacksaw's about a pound. Um, so there you go. Hope you enjoyed this. Be safe with using these tools. But enjoy. Enjoy the campfire. It's beautiful. All right. I'll see you on the trail. <laughs>